Hello to Tails, to Ink, and to Bebe, who was the first in the chat because he cheated a little bit. But then again, the stream was scheduled, so someone could have done that. It's Into the Splinterverse, and we're on episode 44. Uh, there's been a lot of interesting things going on in the last couple weeks. My idea to start that new version of the game... I, the only thing that's totally stopping me from doing that, guys, is I don't know how to make a token with any value for it. So, and and that you'd have to pay money to run servers to run a game. And it's like, well, how do you fund the servers if you don't have a token with any value that people are buying? And that's probably the hardest part about crypto. And that would kind of explain why SPS is down at 1.3 cents. Um but, you know, you want oh, and Hank Gatherings here as well. And DJ, yo, yo, yo. Baby, you want to say hi to the crowd? I talked a little extra there. Are we live? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, hello, everybody. How is uh, everybody doing? I hope that you are okay. Guys, you ready for a party and that uh, you uh, will participate with us uh, in the fun that we're having tonight. I mean, always happy to see you guys. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and Stock Jockey checked in. So shout out to you, sir. And, yes, thank you for anyone who gives us a thumbs up. We, I am starting to uh, send all my stuff to Twitch as well, guys. So if you want to follow me over there, that'd be good. I'm Steve 82 on Twitch as well. Um, I don't know which platform is going to be better for all my live streams. But, you know. Oh, and Tails entered the waiting room. Yes, he wants and to join we'll the have, show. Yes, we'll have a guest joining the show, um, waiting for the audio to connect. All right, let me just move this off for just a second. It didn't look like he, we were going to do an ac accidental face reveal. So, did you guys set this up and you and you decided not to tell me? Well, maybe. So, uh, Tails, can you say hello to the people here? Hello, crypto boys and ghouls. All right. How are you guys we'll doing back tonight? In. We're doing pretty good. So are we calling you Tails or iProto today? That's up to you. <laughs> that was too funny, man. I mean, I, I heard it when I listened to it, but I'm like, it's not exactly the same. It's just similar speech no. patterns. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was sick at the time, too, so it kind of changed my voice a little bit. Uh, so... Well. So we'll be having some ideas. Uh, when did you guys set this up? Was this last minute? Because I asked, I asked Baby Omega earlier today if we were going to have anybody, and he said no. But I should learn better than to believe him when he says <laughs> we might have a guest. <laughs> you should, you should learn better than to believe me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Last time he did that with with Nate. So no, he set this <laughs> up a week ago. He's been excited ever since. <laughs> That's too funny. So oh tonight we are having a special guest, uh, one of the newest additions to the Splinterlands team, uh, the one that will be in charge with uh, the stuff that will give us frustration when we lose to, for two. Uh, the guy behind the Arc Mage, awesome battle uh, help, not battle helper, awesome uh, battle assistant, um, and yeah. Proto, now you can really present yourself and uh, say a few words about you, about about your service. If it's still, uh, I mean, it's, I know it's still running, but if you have any plans and any, anything future, like if you're planning to continue your work on it. So yeah, just just a couple of words. Sure, thanks. Um, okay, j j one second before you get into that. Yes, I got completely okay. trolled by these two just now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he got me with the hello boys and ghouls. <laughs> all right, go ahead, sir. I, I definitely wasn't practicing all day. It didn't happen at all. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I'm going to be uh, helping out, or Archmage, I guess, is going to be helping out with the liquidity bots that are going to be coming into Modern pretty soon. Um, I actually finally got them working today. We, we've been blocked for a little bit by uh, Splinterland's anti-bot measures that they'd put in place but we've passed that i've actually got all of them pushed through novice now and they are ready to start in bronze pretty much after i'm done this stream you know what thank you thank you thank you because all the salt that i see all day long on twitter and it's like people have no idea this is happening 
I'm so tired of playing max level cards in bronze and silver. It's been addressed. A solution has been thought out by the team, and you guys are still crying all day about it. Well, maybe because and, they haven't seen it in, 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 in action yet, so... Yeah, yeah, because the main goal of this is definitely to fix that problem, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the hope. I mean, like, I, I don't know how long it's going to take to address everyone's concerns because like it takes a while for them to go up through the leagues they have to actually own the cards that was a stipulation that matt put in that they they can't just be soul bound accounts um so we only have so many accounts that actually have good collections quote unquote uh so we'll, we'll see how they do and if they need more stuff then hopefully splinterlands can provide those assets but you said you said you just finally made them uh work does it mean uh, we can expect them soon implemented or is it still going to take some testing and stuff um yeah no i i have the kind of base minimum viable product ready to go like literally when i'm done this stream um i'm going to start that up so people will be able to queue against them in a couple hours but again they they're normal accounts so they need to rise through uh various parts of modern the or uh, parts in bronze rather the um most of the accounts are supposed to stay in bronze and they they don't really have great collections for like 80 percent of them uh some of them have a little bit better collections we're hoping that they're going to rise into silver maybe gold but it, it really just depends what people are queuing against so how many so, how many accounts are we talking about um so through our service there's going to be 100 accounts and they're going to be playing uh, 50 matches each, so that's 5,000 matches total per day. I did actually just find out that there's going to be at least one other service that's going to be doing the same thing with, I believe, another 100 accounts. I don't know any details about them, but I'm, I'm going to assume that's Siler that's probably running it, given that he's on, on staff now at uh, Splinterlands. Oh, what and... you said, you said 50, 50 bottles, but you mean 24 bottles for that, right? Like, uh... Uh, no, th these ones are actually going to be using vouchers. So they're going to be buying oh. energy every day. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah so the, not only is this a solution for low level, I think the sneaky part that not many were thinking about, but I was, is that it's going to become a voucher sink. Now, where are you getting the vouchers? Is the team buying them and providing them? Are you buying them and burning them? Or you just have like an influx to earn them? Uh, Splinterlands said that they have them ready for us. How exactly they source them, I'm not sure. If they just had kind of a stockpile, if they're buying them off the market, I don't know. You'd have to ask Matt. Okay, so that's a that's a good town hall question. Somebody go type it in there for us. <laughs> but yeah, that 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 is exciting. If it's coming from the market, if it's not coming from the market, and it's just the team has a stockpile, it's good to see them putting them to use in that way. And, and this is going to help the whole ecosystem because those of us who are struggling in diamond, I don't know who that might be, but as these weaker maxed cards accounts that maybe don't have as many cards as me start getting up through the lower leagues finally because they have some accounts with properly leveled cards that they get to pick on for a few days, they should start to progress up into gold and into diamond and become match liquidity for us. And then they'll be out of the match liquidity for the people who only have bronze and silver decks. They'll be playing each other or playing these bots. Um, you know, it's going to be a balancing act. I hope you guys are going to do some good tracking of your win-loss ratio. I don't think you guys want these guys going 0-50. Uh, you want them to be probably, what do you think, like a 50% win rate? Maybe only a 40% win rate? Have you guys thought uh, that out? Yeah, so I mean, like, the, the main goal for them is to not go outside the range that we set. I don't think that's going to be a problem, at least until we have a lot more people in the format. Um, so we, we have, again, 80% of them are going to be set to stay in bronze and if we see them going too high then we'll we'll try to kind of change some stuff to make them go lower if they're staying too low um then that would also be a problem we don't just want to give 50 wins out every day on every account so we'd probably have to add some more assets so yes we're aiming for somewhere around a 40 i'll say 45 percent because like ideally with these ranked systems you should be at a out of 50 percent that's where your kind of equilibrium point is it's where everyone wants to be in a healthy format but because there's a, a win streak bonus underneath champion it, it's actually closer to 45 
but um, does, yeah, that, that's does, kind of the target. But uh, does it like the uh, is the algorithm going to be like flexible? Like if uh, the bot wins, let's say a certain amount of matches, then um, it's kind of becomes like weak in a way. Like uh, the algorithm changes to to be not so good. Like is that going to be flexible? You just hoping that the way it's set up, it will be able to maintain 50 ish percent. Yeah, so that that's kind of the MVP part that I was talking about where right now I'm just trying to get them kind of up going, have people be able to play their games. Um, as more time goes on, I'm going to add a little bit more custom code into them to make it so they can do some of that dynamic tuning so we don't have to sit there watching them constantly see how they're doing and adjusting things manually. I'd like that to be an automated process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because this is a bit if, new for you, if, right? Because your, your current service, I if I'm using it, you, I want you to win for me as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Here, here, you're trying to do something a little different, right? It, exactly, and that, I talked about that on the People's Guild podcast a little bit. Is it's really interesting from my point of view because now I'm not really incentivized to win. I'm incentivized to try to give people a good playing experience. So we need to kind of figure out what that means. But I would like people to play and not feel like they just absolutely dominated their opponent and feel like their opponent didn't absolutely dominate them. I want them to feel like it was a good match. So they, they can't actually tell if it was even against a bot or not. Ideally. But it won't it won't affect the service for, for the regular bot. No, it's it's totally separate. They're on totally separate servers. And by the way, Steve, for in case you care, you have your full name um <clears throat> on Oh I mean, yeah. I, I don't usually care, but I do change that when you bring it up. Well, I mean, I'm just letting you know. Because it's not like this is a great way to hide my name. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, it's it. You cannot tell what what your name is by by your nick, by your chat. But so, Proto, you. Uh, did you did you participate in the uh, in the promotional events? Yeah, I did. I, I grabbed twenty five of the legendary. Wasn't too keen on the other one. The rare was kind of yeah, me kind of yeah. glad I didn't. It tanked pretty fast. Well, I mean, both of them tanked pretty fast actually for value. But um, yeah, I, I, I like the legendary, and I think it's going to be really good with the new summoner. So, did you get the twenty-five just to get the guaranteed gold foil, or like, do you have yeah. plans for the rest? Yeah, exactly. My, my thoughts is I'd get the guaranteed gold foil, and then. If the rare ends up being good, then I'll probably just sell some of the extra stuff. Otherwise, it just kind of all goes on the wagons. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like you're not like feeding two accounts or anything like that. No. Yeah. Awesome. I actually think people are sleep sleeping on the rare a little bit. Um, it, it might not seem like that good of a card, but because of the teams that it's played on and they're so meta right now, it just makes them a little stronger. That meta might only last like three or four days, though, because we do have a possible meta breaker coming into the ecosystem with the next uh, airdrop card out of conflict, kind of being designed to kill that Grim Bardoon team, yeah. or at least put a big wrench in it. But still, when you're playing with your Grim Bardoon team, um, if you throw this card on your team and they're not playing a Grim Bardoon team, it makes the it makes it so you can like get rid of those really strong tanks and it it helps against one of the stronger uh new grim bardoon counters that people try where they try to just do a lot of melee monsters that can attack with high melee and and just mm -hmm. be able because you know grim's life is a little bit low you can't heal them big heals natively so they they try to out damage your healing but if you can half peep the, the first monster who tends to be pretty strong sometimes you can mess that up so yeah, but we'll you see, you we'll attack see. the same you attack the same monster every time, and also which who, who do you give up to? Well, put in, in, in in until this card, that was normal for having only getting to attack. Yeah, no, position. I understand, but what I'm saying is like, which which spot do you give up to put him in the team? Oh, I mean, you you because usually, not have, scatter, you not usually have an open spot in those grim teams. They tend to be grim with two two to three healers, and then one monster that can attack kind of randomly in the back yeah, so, but yeah. it's it's in it's in a it's in a variation though it's not it's not so good in the grim i shoot your back row it's good in the grim i'm going to put a lot of damage in the front row position and even if you have grim i'm going to kill your grim is what my hope is but if you don't i'm going to demolish whatever you put there so because there's that lineup too 
Well, I don't know. Just uh, I think they should have been uh, switched around uh, team wise. Like I can see in in a fire being useful, like with, with Yasek. But uh, yeah, you're I don't right. Because the the only weakness I see in Baron is that he's for two teams that are not so meta right now. Death and Fire are not usually turned to if. It, it, you know, if those other teams are in play, it, I, I do well, think people have to play around would, with them, but we'll see it. We'll see if it changes. I haven't had enough time to play with it. That um, will change with Lurkus. I can tell you that much. Yeah. I, I was actually thinking that this is going to be a seed. Like the legendary is a seed for the new airdrop summoner. And I'm hoping that the rare is going to be a seed for the accompanying summoner whenever that comes out. Yeah, because who yeah, says Yasuk has range. to be the only summoner in the game that can give Scattershot? And maybe your Scattershot could be more targeted on the new one. <laughs> so, and since you mentioned yeah, I mean, this, so many abilities, here. If, if they're this, giving out so many abilities like this, I, I can't see one of the other summoners not also having Scattershot. Yeah, and it could be either of the two since it's a dual, dual monster. Exactly. But, but imagine... Imagine Larkus with not only bumping uh, Baron's magic, but also making it, uh, as, aside from, from uh, halving, also uh, affliction. So he's just shooting all around and afflicting and and, uh, and halving. And he's life leeching, everybody. and he's doing that in the, fir in the, in the ambush phase. Yeah, I know, it's going to be broken, but I don't have this yet. So I don't know, I can't do it yet. Well, um, I mean, this but, card, yeah, though... Speculate. This card did make me go to the market and start leveling up some of my other cards just to get a few more wagon points. Um, and it's making me think about doing another like 100 or 200 rebellion pack buy um, just to stake um, into the wagons to get a few more points as well. But that was the same. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, made me so, buy a couple cards. Because I want, I want a chance to pull some golds of him. I think it'll be a valuable card. Um so it's gonna it's definitely it's definitely showing like Matt did say when he was on our show that they wanted to bring back some of the uh you know some of the in the the power I, I'm surprised he's seven mana though. I'm shocked on that one. Well um, it's it's aligned with, with everything else. So. Like you feel it's too low, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I feel like maybe it should be an eight. But yeah. I guess you only get to give this to two monsters, right? And and how does this work? I can give one one of them trample and one of them. No, I think both of them will get both, both of them get both abilities, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what I was double checking because I hadn't dug that deep into this. Because as I was showing on the other screen, I ran a group buy for this, and it kind of in, like ruled my whole life for two days. <laughs> When you're holding other people's money and, and and you have an important job to sell those extra cards and get them that cash back you told you would get them, you got to do all that while the selling's hot. And I did pretty good for the group, so that was pretty cool. And we're we're hanging out in ninth place, but I don't think we're going to be fighting for the leaderboard. We're going to see if they're going to let me hold on to uh, the top ten, um, or if one of these guys is going to decide they want to buy. At least they're kind of far behind. They'd have to do a pretty big buy to get past us. But then again, there's probably going to be a little bit of movement on the last day. So they're probably going to kick us out. But, yeah. Although with every day that goes by, it's going to cost them more and more. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that the, the, that, um, the sale actually seems to have done pretty well, which is a little uh, surprising to me for all the saltiness in the community. Cause he had said he was hoping for 200,000 DEC and to already be at 178 a thousand with some time left um and possibly at least a couple people who will spend a little bit more like I, king kong seems like he's got first locked up but you know these people here might want to spend a little bit more to try to jockey oh, they'll up be a worse couple for positions sure. at the end of the, the line, line they'll be worse yeah. up and down as well in, in the bottom as well like people wanting to get the title and whatnot yeah, so 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 far this seems to be pretty good. Um, where did you f uh, fall, Iproto, on Matt's idea that this should have been a burn and we should have paid him from the Dow um, for this? Because I I supported that, but a lot of people didn't. I was just kind of wondering. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was an interesting idea. I, I honestly didn't put a ton of thought into it because I've kind of got a lot of other stuff going on. So I, I kind of 
I, I thought it was a good idea, but I didn't think strongly enough either ways to, to even vote for it. So I just let other people go with that one. Yeah, yeah. It's, the DAOs and the way they've been turning out the last couple of votes have been kind of interesting for me. They don't they definitely haven't been afraid to disagree with Matt and to not do the things he's asking them to do. And they also seem very, very reluctant to spend the money. And the only thing that I could think of is they're thinking it's a little bit too early to start tapping into the crypto they hold. Um, cause you know, typically in the crypto cycle post having is when you get the real run. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna sell that Ethereum, I think they, does the DAO have any Bitcoin? I forget. I know they mm -hmm. have ETH. I don't think they, I don't I think mean, so, but, but you know, do. if we're going to have a real run and there's any chance Ethereum is <clears throat> going to be like a $10,000 coin in about five months. Maybe, you know, I could see some hesitance to, to really touch any of those funds. But it, it is going to be interesting to see if they can, if uh, he can turn this into something he kind of envisioned where the DAO is hiring the team as kind of a contractor, or if that's not going to work and the team is going to have to keep, you know, doing these type of things to fund themselves. I probably am curious. I mean, I haven't heard it. From you like i i don't want like if you're repeating yourself that's okay you don't have to but uh your journey like with with few words like your journey how how did you came into splinter lands how are you feeling about the current state of the game just curious never had uh, a chance to talk with you yeah sure i'll i'll do the uh kind of reader's digest version here so i've been coding for quite a long time like 25 years have a computer science degree of currently working software. I did various uh, game coding projects over the years. Um, through that, it eventually brought me into kind of the card game space of uh, Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering. And once I started taking a look into crypto, I thought, well, this NFT thing makes a lot of sense for, for cards because I was already in that. I'm already spending my however many hundreds of dollars on a tropical island in Magic. Well, might as well get a digital version of that, that I'm not going to have to worry about getting water on and damaged. So um, it's just looking around for what games existed, found Splinterlands, and I was like, yeah, this makes sense. I like it. When was that? If you don't mind. Uh, 2021, mid-2021. Mid so you've been here for a while. Yeah. I, I came basically right. I came here at the perfect time, but I didn't buy in until the worst time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I remember hearing you came in while Untamed was still for sale, right? Uh yeah, so Untamed or was it Dice? I, I can't remember. It, they they were like just selling out. So yeah. I had an opportunity to get stuff low. It was right before everything spiked. I didn't bite on it and by the time I did everything was way up. Yeah. Yeah, my my story goes I get here after alpha was already sold out i didn't get i wasn't here for the pre-sale but i joined the month after the game went live and uh i didn't get heart a big into beta but then i saw it it sell out and the packs went wild so when untamed came out i made sure to get everything get everything to max and get a good stack of extra packs and that worked the problem is i took all of that profit and uh i bought a lot of chaos <laughs> legion oh, no. <laughs> so that, that's okay. where but but you know that that happened so it is kind of interesting i think almost all uh, like the the one caveat that almost comes up in all of our players backgrounds is magic which is kind of interesting to see how you know that game has affected a large generation of people in 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 understanding kind of uh you know, I think a lot of us, at least maybe not all of us, but we have those like, oh, I had those cool magic cards when I was a kid, but I couldn't take care of them. I couldn't keep them. And so the idea of a digital ownership of these cards was, was definitely something that was extra interesting to us. I'm the occasional odd one that never had played Magic the Gathering. I did play some Hearthstone, but yeah, Magic, no, not really. But yeah, I, I think getting into Magic and owning the cards and then tr trying to come into their digital versions where you have Arson and Magic Arena and you don't own anything, that that felt bad, right? So 
coming back into here where you actually own stuff again. And it's like, I can sell these things if I eventually wanted to leave that, that just feels more natural for like what this space started as what, what card game started as, you know? So what do you feel about the current state of the game? Like with changes that been made, like, do you see we're going in the, in the right direction? Do you think that, uh, we are just slowly sinking? Like, how do you see, how do you see the current situation? Um, how do I think the current state of development is or the, how the current state of the community is? Cause I, I don't think those are in sync right now. Oh, you can say both. You can tell me both. Like how, how do you, yeah. Uh, just your opinion Well, on both actually. Yeah. It's, it's good that you brought it up because, uh, also interesting to see how you see the community. Yeah. So I, I think the current state of development is they, they're iterating very quickly on things. I know some people feel they're going too slow, but I mean, if you look at where we were just even like three months ago, the game looks literally totally different at this point. Um, I think they're taking a lot of risks. That's really good to see. They have kind of seen what like the, the issues they need to address are. I'm a little disappointed that they are totally backing down on land right now, but I, I understand it and I kind of I agree with it at the moment. Um, so I, I think it's good what they're doing. The community, on the other hand, it, it does feel like it's rapidly shrinking and has very little patience to go through this. So it, it's walking a tightrope for sure, trying to keep people engaged while going through this process of figuring out what they need to do to about face. Something like yeah. always darkest before the sunrise. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. I it's very interesting because they've made some pretty drastic changes to the game and matt did ask us for patience and, and patience has been hard to have um it has been harder to have for some others who have left i've never really thought about leaving the game but i did have my couple weeks where i thought maybe we needed to do something drastically different because the the change that they made was making so many people upset um and you know i couldn't i couldn't help but like like i don't know how to defend well i'm playing in bronze all day and i'm fighting max level cards and it's not fun i don't have any defense to that answer i don't know how to tell that person no no you should be having fun doing that yeah um i not have fun. told people you be from, having patience. yeah i have yeah i have been i have been someone who's reminded people that like i agree with matt what he did because people who come in and just stay in bronze or just stay in silver or even just stay in gold they eventually kind of become net um extractors from the game and they have a cap that they're willing to spend and i and i understand having that mindset but for our game it's it's not great if you're not willing to keep putting money into into the you know ecosystem keep trying to push to be at the top because a lot of what they've designed to me it feels like it's designed for people to to combine cards to those higher levels yeah but we don't have enough players that do that and so we get a, a massive oversupply sometimes of cards when there really shouldn't there wouldn't be a massive overplay if we had even i don't know like ten thousand people who wanted to play with max level cards so yeah I, I think I challenge. touched on this maybe a little bit on the other uh, podcast I was on, but I, I kind of feel like the way that you get people to start doing that is by locking some of the rewards behind more ownership. And wh whether that's just literally you need people to own the cards to be able to earn, so not just fully rented or whatever. Or you make things like events where they have an entry cost to play the event. So let's say everyone has to buy a pack of cards and that pack is your entry into the event that pushes through pack sales that gives revenue to the company and it increases ownership which then if they play ranked will increase where they're going to be able to play as they get more and more assets right but overall you are like hopeful about the i mean obviously if you're joining the team that should probably Show yeah, I, I should probably clarify that we're, we're contracting to the team. We, well, we didn't join the team. Okay. Well, I understand. I mean, we, me and Steve were contractors for a while <laughs> before the end of Splinter Lunch TV. So I understand. But yeah, still, like, uh, if you decide to uh, invest time and energy 
into something, you probably believe in the person that is uh, hiring you, even on contract con contractual basis. Yeah, no, I, I do believe in it. I think that it still has a good chance of doing well. It's like I said, though, it's just it's walking that tightrope. So it's going to be an interesting next few months. Have you uh, have you tried different uh, card games, Web3, different Web3 card games? Like, have you tried any of the competition? Uh, not recently. I, I've been pretty all in on on this one lately. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, played baby. like Gods and Unchained a while ago. Yeah, B baby picks on us because we've uh, a lot of us have been playing parallel a little bit and um, talking about their version of the way they do the game and earning. And uh, that's where Mondroid got his idea that I've kind of supported and a few other content creators have, have said, you know, yeah, that would be an interesting version of the game. And the basics of it is just when you play the game, you're you're using ghost cards, but you get all the cards. Um, mm -hmm. not, in, not quite all of them, but it'd be like if you got the core set, but not, the, not all the legendaries or not all the airdrops and you, you're never playing against players that have cards that are drastically stronger than yours, unless they've spent the money to own those legendary cards. And, and, and then you, but you don't earn with the ghost cards at all. Um, right. but you get to play the game. They, they, uh, if you win a match, they throw it up in your face. You could have earned this much prime but you don't own cards and then you play another game you win you could have won this much prime but you don't own the cards you see that enough times you go okay let me buy a couple cards because i could be winning crypto and, and, and it, but it allows anybody to come and play the game and just you you're always able to play and be competitive as opposed to in our game when you when you come and you join and you buy that spell book you're you're not competitive unless you put more money in um, you can maybe rent and be competitive for, I'm going to say a month because rentals are pretty cheap, maybe even two, but it's going to require additional investment, but it's a, it's interesting. I, I'm hoping one shot, well, like one click rentals is that kind of their solution to this. Um, but I, I'm worried it's, I don't know. I'm worried it's not going to work. Yeah, I, I'm. I think it's a good tool to have. I, I don't know if that's going to be the ticket for new players. Like a, a new player coming into a game, I don't think that's their first thought is let's rent everything. They're not going to know what they're doing. They're, they're still trying to figure out what the abilities are, right? They're, they're not going to be like, yeah, let's give me every single card in the game. Well, but at some point they probably will and they will have the, the money to do so. Like, the spell book comes with some amount of uh, credits. Well, yeah, that's why that's why I did say they have three dollars worth of credits. They can probably rent cards for a couple months if it's presented to them right. I would think for a couple of months they could have a basic idea if they want to stay in the game, play the game or not. Like, but we still push people to an ultimatum if they want to continue to play the game. Uh, Parallel doesn't do that. That's the difference here is like i can always just go play parallel and just play it because it's a game um maybe that doesn't do anything for parallel but it does mean that i, I like i don't know how they make money off of a free-to-play player or even how it helps their ecosystem i haven't dug into it enough because to me it's just a game i haven't invested in it yet so i just go play it sometimes um i'm thinking about taking that next step and doing some investments into it but i haven't done it yet but it really comes down to, um, I, like, I'm trying to figure out how the new player ex experience, because that's the next thing that they, they want to have perfect, how they work it out. Like, how you bring a new player in, introduce them to the game right, and have them play the game in a way where they can enjoy it and keep progressing without hitting what has typically happened to our current players. They hit a wall. Depending Whoa. on their budget, th that wall might be bronze. Or that wall might be silver, or that wall must, might be gold. But they all hit a wall, and they don't progress high enough. And the reason, and, and I'm and I'm comfortable saying that because if they if we did have a lot of people progressing to the top, we wouldn't have this problem of our card assets being so low. That's where I Proto is coming uh, to to the help, to the rescue, and because yeah, 
people still look at it as uh, yeah when new players come they'll play max dex yeah that would be temporary and and that soon will be taken care of so they won't be playing against max dex and yeah if they make uh, a minimal investment they will hit a wall at some point but that's normal for for every game that is play and earn like if they're earning and uh they should be i think earning according to however much they invested so that makes sense like if they think it's worth it to go higher now they have the option to just pick which one's card which whichever cards they want to um max out or want to increase in level because they don't get hit anymore they don't have get penalties so they don't have to have every card uh that is playable at the moment they can improve their deck little by little by getting the meta cards and and seeing what or maybe hunting deals on the market or whatever it is but there are options i mean if somebody finds it worth it their time to play the game and earn stuff and they believe in what they they come to see um i think that little by little people that are not investing would start investing in they can afford to So, I got two ideas here. Um, for, first one, which is kind of a long time horizon thing, like the the thing I'm doing with liquidity bots, it's it's a band aid solution really because we just have low liquidity and we just kind of need to solve that issue until we can get more natural players in. Like kind of a longer horizon thing. I think what other games, and I'm kind of going back to Magic here a little bit, but uh, probably Hearthstone and others as well, have done to solve this issue of how do you get new players actually interested, engaged, and um, have liquidity sorted out, is they have other formats that are designed for having everyone on a similar playing level, right? So that they've got their limited playing modes where... You again, you buy your pack of cards, you go in, you open the cards, and then everyone's on the same playing field. Obviously, for this specific game, they're going to have to kind of mutate how exactly that works. Like the cards you open would probably be kind of like phantom maxed level or whatever, but there, there, there's things that they can do to make a mode that people would be able to understand and they would have to put a little bit in to actually engage in it. And I, I think there's an appetite for that as shown from other games. Um, I had a second point, but I forgot it already. <laughs> I'll, I'll come uh, back to Tra it. Trash sure. Panda has an interesting comment here. He says, not everyone should have to go to the top. Can't there be a place for casual players to add to the ecosystem with their presence? And and, and yeah. that's the challenge, though. I, I don't know if a casual player really adds very much if they're not investing anymore if they're not really talking about the game either even, at all if they're not taking the opportunity to at least make hide posts or maybe you know spread the word on twitter if they're really just casually they playing provide, the game they provide much liquidity and they are around they're around but so at any point at any point any situation of somebody can change so anybody can turn from like something that happens in the game can make them from a casual player to somebody who is actually invested in the game. So as long as you keep them around, uh, I think it's a good thing and, and they contribute with, with much liquidity and, and uh, maybe they get to interact with the community, which is not always as toxic and salty. I remember good times and I believe they can come back when, when the game is in a better state. So I think I still believe we have one of the best communities in the Web3 space. So, yeah, they can stick around as casual players. They might find that they enjoy the community. They might interact with people that might get them excited. And then they might go, uh, like, go and improve their collection. Like, as long as you keep them around, there is a chance that they will become more than casual player, I, I think. Yeah, and I, I think, like, a casual player, yeah. On the individual basis, they, they maybe don't contribute a lot, but a lot of casual players do. If a lot of casual players are there, even if they're just getting a little bit, A, that adds up, and B, they probably have friends. And if they're enjoying yeah. their time, they're going to tell their friends, and eventually you're going to find friends that aren't casual players. So yeah, we're the it, most, it all the best matters, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, you, do, you, do you worry at all that the new system has kind of taken away the things to tell your friends about, though? 
even if you pull a gold legendary card out of, out of uh, the Glint store nowadays, you know, you, you don't own it. You can't sell it. It's not that lotto ticket that people used to tell their friends about. It's yeah. not the, the ape story. And it's funny that ape has this story in two games for me, but I, I joined and I, and I bought I, my first like week, I got a gold ax master and sold it for a bunch of money. And then I was all in on this game. He did it on big time too, and on his first day, found like a five hundred dollar NFT. So that guy has good fe- first weeks in games. <laughs> but n- nonetheless, you know, nowadays we don't have that lotto win for the for casual players to occasionally get. Um, it's more of a consistent grind up and an eventual payoff, which is I honestly probably healthier for the ecosystem, but also it it takes a lot more understanding of what we're doing here. Um, I think to stick around and be casual. But but again, you're talking about the uh, incomplete product because that's not like that's that's the current state we are in. But uh, nobody says nothing will change from this point onwards. So I, I I think at least in my eyes, I've seen the team being pretty flexible when it comes to changes and listening. They're definitely listening to to the community. So. Um, nothing is final. Everything is developing, and uh, yeah, one day might be maybe we have some other uh, jackpot tickets that we can, you know, entice players with if that's if that's what it takes. But also, uh, since Proto mentioned his idea, have you have you have you shared it with Matt? Like, I mean, I'm sure you still being a contractor is to have some conversations every now and then. So have you shared your, uh, your idea or it's just like uh, straight, straight uh, talk to whatever you're contracted to? Uh, so, so far we've stayed on point, um, but it, it probably is something that I would think about formalizing at some point. I, I've kind of just spitballed it with a few people, but I, yeah, I because really on my, put the pen to the paper. So to speak. On my on my point, yeah, the team I, I I've not I mean I I know from from the past I know that they are willing to listen. So yeah, you have an idea straight away, shoot it, and who knows? Maybe they find it a good idea too. And anything, every little thing helps. I think. Yeah, the, yep. yeah, that's interesting. I do think now that the team is smaller, Matt is kind of focusing them in on trying to figure out how to do the new player acquisition so that during this next bull run, he can try to get that marketing going and bring in those new people who at least won't have the salt of, hey, I used to like the way things work. They'll just go like, oh, so this is how these things work. And you have to convince them that they're good. Um I, I I don't see it in the game system yet, so I'm hoping he can pull it off. Um, like I said, I just I don't the, the, unless you are somebody who comes in here with a pretty big bag of money and decide to make a pretty big investment, that that beginning of the game can be tough. And I know his liquidity bots are are going to be there right now to help provide some better leveled matchups for them. But like he said, those are only a band aid solution. So I, I'm really hoping to figure out, um, you know, what what he's going to do there. Well, but um, you you you're aware that if a lot of new players do come, that will be that will be the new bots. <laughs> that will be the ones. Yeah, yeah. They they then then you don't need the bots that are currently being run to provide match liquidity. Yeah, so I think these bots get the fix. This, that, so, I think these bots are the band aid that needs to get. Uh, max decks out of uh, silver and gold. So once that is done, there is no going back. I mean, at least not not in the extent that it is now. Because yeah, people will lose ratings and stuff like that, but it it won't be anywhere near as dramatic as it is now. So um, I think I think once that's taken care of, um, things will fall naturally. As I said, if you have enough new players and they're playing each other. Then yeah, it will feel more like competition, and and uh, we don't have to worry about uh, the bandaid anymore. Okay, so Splinter Shorts came in. He says, "I started a new account, and I don't care about the SPS I get. I care about how long I have to grind to get 150 glint draw, some fun matches, and what do all these buttons do?" 
that's an that's an interesting way to look at it i mean i do understand that if you come in now and you do play the game i do think the glint store is going to be a win for them i just think they need to figure it out and if a lot of that stuff like the only thing with the glint store that's kind of interesting that i think they ended up doing but is um like something that's causing a problem is there's titles in there and there is some things that have monetary value so they don't just want to flood the market with glint but because of that some people have felt like they don't earn enough glint considering that most of what that store sells is soul bound but it's also because we haven't had a soul bound unlock of cards for people to see how this soul bound experiment is going to work because we haven't got to the place where we get to play the game of, hey, if it costs me $5 to unlock this card, but it's selling for $10, i am going to unlock a bunch and sell them. And then when the price gets down to $6, I'm going to go like, eh, maybe it's not worth my time. But it's going to be an interesting thing to see how much money can be made from the people that have saved up these cards and didn't decide to burn them and it's going to be i think our next thing where somebody gets to make a very interesting video like literally i have those five gold izzy r's and if they're going for hundreds of dollars i might get to make a little video going look i held on to these forever i unlocked them for a hundred bucks and i sold them all for like two thousand dollars and and you know that's a fun little story of 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 soul bound cards but until we get that unlock we don't have those and also it's creating an, a native um disadvantage for any new player because they're going to go play the game and they're going to lose to a card they're going to go look for it in the shop and it's not going to be there and and that that's not a really good experience either well yeah, you mean that's the new, really hurting right now the, the new soul bones or the current ones the current ones well, if yeah. it's not changed and i do think they do plan to roll out the new soul bounds as part of the new player experience so that we can unlock the old ones and and, and and i know they might make it really expensive and i don't really have a problem for that because if there's demand for the card you'll unlock it if there's no demand for the card you won't yeah um, and, and especially and because they added a second functionality if there if there's no secondary value then burn them for glint <laughs> and go, go glitch and, and yeah and then also naturally the money that you spent to unlock it will be keeping uh, a floor on those prices as well so it won't uh tank other cards prices alongside yeah it, sh it should never go much under there it could go a little bit under if a lot got printed and somebody was just like crap i want to get some money back so i'll sell under that but floor, he's not but... getting but he's not getting back because he's paying the money so he's Some not getting back. back. If I paid five back and it's not working out for me, I still might take four back. I, I lose a dollar in the transaction, but it's better than losing five. <laughs> but if, why would you lose the dollar in the transaction? Like, why would you sell it for less than what you if paid? I, well, because the market gets too saturated. Okay, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that. I, like I don't it. know if it's going to happen, but I'm saying it could. It could. You uh, occasionally you could see them go dip just under for a little bit. That will be just like yeah, um, once in a blue moon scenario occasion. I think it just yeah. First of all, I don't think if like initially there won't be many many for sale, but because people will be waiting to see what's going on. So if the ones that uh, that go ahead and unlock the cards, if they cannot sell them for some profit, then people will just not be unlocking, uh, won't be unbounding them. So, I mean, I, I well, it will be fun, but whenever it comes, I'm not in a rush. Yeah, yeah. and to Alex's point, I think they said they wanted to release a new set of Soulbounds around July. Yeah, what that's I what I remember. Saying. Like, yeah, I think it's in the summer summer, sometime. Summer, yeah. So we're supposed to get a new set in July, and then the question was going to be, do you have to have the new set out before you start the unlock period for these? And and Matt had, had said that you probably didn't need to on a couple town halls. Um, I even tried to, when he was on our show, push him on this, that, you know, you got to start letting us unlock these because it's, it's becoming a um, problem in competitive play. And it was just going to get worse but and he agreed but they still haven't made that move and all i could think of is that they priorities yeah i'm guessing they have some work that has to be done to allow the unlocking um i thought it was already built into the soul bounds because the locks are on the card but maybe maybe that's all that it is is a little 
lock image on the card, not not an actual locking mechanism that was built and is ready to be unlocked. But uh, it is it is going to be a problem. It'll be a glaring problem if if we do get into the new player push and they can't even rent or purchase these cards. So. Yeah, well, but I, I think one thing that they really need to do as part of the the glint shop system is, is have more targeted purchasing towards what you're doing. Because like if you look at any other game that has this sort of dust system, which is what they're trying to do, the reason that you turn things into dust is because you can turn it into something that you specifically want. You do it at an awful rate, but you can fill in the gaps that you've been not getting right now you're just going to turn it into glint and get some more stuff you didn't want which doesn't really help anyone yeah and he they do seem to be at least subjective to the idea of making it less random but they haven't made it for sure to the where you'd just be able to buy whatever you want they did talk about maybe featuring like a card a week that you could buy and maybe that would work um, hmm. They definitely said they're going to add in higher draws to where like you can guarantee you get epics or better, or you can guarantee you get legendary. Um, well, it'd, still be a, it'd still be a random legendary though, and they'll probably be very very expensive. I can tell you right now though, I know what you're saying because the only soulbound card I don't have maxed and have many extra copies of is the uh, dragon legendary um, with weapons training. And by the way, I, by the way, I just got three gold for like two days ago when I opened. Then... Yeah, I know. I know. And I, I'm stuck with a level two. At least at level two, it can still weapons train as good as any other one. But I don't tend to use it because it just I see it at level two and ignore it. So I need to remember it's still a usable card because it, it beats me sometimes. <laughs> but well, it makes you feel any better. I'm missing the same thing. That's I, I've got two cards yeah. that I'm missing. It's that one and then the dragon summoner. Ah, yeah. And it's just annoying because you, you can't get it. Um, you don't want to you, you it's like so funny like they i feel like this set has it, they let it go for too long because it definitely got to a point where i didn't care about my rewards i opened yeah. my chest and i didn't even care i got to the season well, that's you. i that's didn't the i didn't do videos about it but that's you that's yeah, not the but i know but you you like the i put a lot of money into the game on a consistent battle uh, a time I don't think you should let that group of players get bored, and that's the ones that got bored. All the players at the top got bored with these. I understand, but you're aware that once once it's uh, out of print, those like who are not so um, rich like you, uh, they probably won't have had the chance to get nowhere near close to what where they wanted to be. And I mean, at the end of the day. Uh, should be some some sort of medium because you still you might not be excited now but as you said if it turns out that uh, you can sell uh, gold for easier for 100 bucks then you'll be like oh well then i'm happy that i was getting all these extra copies that i wasn't really excited at the time i was getting them so i mean you're still getting your cards whether you're excited or not for them and now you even have an option not to get them and save your glint so i mean i i just think that uh it's a uh, it's a win-win. People now, like you, have uh, titles to spend on. Uh, will have the option to save and 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 get a head start on on the new set on the new set of uh, soulbound cards. So I mean, I think in that aspect, it's way better than it used to be. You almost agree. I see. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree. I, I mean, in general, the, the, the Glint store needs to get a little bit better. I still think unlocking should have happened by now. Um, maybe maybe they could have done it at a very high price in the beginning and decreased the price of the unlock over time. Yeah, even if they would have done trading, like if you could trade Soulbound for more Soulbound to the same you know, rarity with other people, just I, something. I think I, the unlock, though, it would have just helped the ecosystem. Because mm -hmm. if it was a if it was a big DEC burn like a big one like what if it literally cost me a hundred dollars to 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 unlock my Izzyr and so I'd only do it if I saw somebody who did it and was able to sell it for more you'd be having people burning away hundreds of dollars twenty dollars of DEC which is what this game needs to support the token economics and we have this huge burning opportunity we have no idea what the demand is for some of these soulbound cards that are out there, what the future demand is going to be, but, but we're not do you doing know, it. 
But instead, do you know what will instead happen? Instead, what they literally did, though, is they let a whole bunch of that possible DEC burn just turn into glint. Okay, <laughs> and glint but, doesn't help the ecosystem. But are you aware that you're saying, like, uh, yeah, maybe they can even put the prices at $100 to unlock my ECR. Are you aware what will happen uh, in not only in Math Chat, like in, in the whole Discord, if that happens, how many salty people will start complaining how much the team wants for the soulbound cars, which is supposed to be your reward for well, play. Well, I'm talking about the gold it, foil when I say $100, not the Okay, matter, still, but... still. No, uh, but it would, like I said, if they released it on a scale down. Okay, we're starting it today. It's $100. Next month, it's 90 The month after that, it's 80 So it goes down a little bit, kind of the way that they're doing things now. They they, they have those scales of, 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 of burns and things like that. It, it would it would go and and you know what like I'm saying if nobody thought that card was worth over a hundred dollars nobody would unlock it it wouldn't do anything but a couple people would to to check the market right to be the first think, ones I to think sell it all, I think it's all like list of priorities and they will once it comes to that priority they will just unlock it but like it won't be like on stages it will be just one option that's that price per PCA, well, yeah, so that that's probably what they're the going to end up doing. But I, I feel I feel like they missed the boat on on turning all of those extra cards into a big DEC burn, and then we wouldn't be sitting here under peg again. Well, I'm happy because I kept my cards. Yeah, and I, yeah, I know. you can get day. you can get I'm discounts happy. on stuff, and it's like this, so it's it's not terrible to be a bit under peg sometimes, but. Proto, did you did you uh, did you enjoy the changes in the in the way ranked works? Like, what's what's your feel about that? Do you think it was bad or did you did you get the title? Did you burn all your soulbound extras? Um, I, I burned my gold foil gladius cards. I didn't touch any of my other like reward cards. Um, yeah, I, but I did that before they turned into Glint. I, I wanted the the DEC. I the DEC. Yeah, I didn't yeah. burn anything. I don't know if that was a mistake or not, but as soon as Matt said Gladiators would be unlockable too, I was like, maybe. I guess I'll just hold them. Maybe. That's uh, they, maybe. They pretty much said they would be. The thing is, though, it's going to be even farther out than the unlockable of these Soulbound cards because it, it'd be the same thing. Not until the next set of gladiator cards is released and that hasn't even been talked about like a date wise but eventually i'll be able to unlock my my one gold foil epic quora and somebody might buy it for a decent amount so i didn't burn her into nothing oh well but and that's uh, my, my only question. that's the only gold foil epic i had so maybe you've been luckier than me i proto and you had some of the not so popular high level ones to burn my question was pro did you go to... for the title do you plan to go for the titles any yes. all of them i i thought about it but uh, i don't know like if, if they're still there when i naturally get there then maybe but i'm not going to start burning cards to get there yeah okay I'm, I'm, yeah I'm, yeah I'm... my problem is like um t the titles are cool but i have like six or seven titles um but you and have so 200 it, plots. I know, but it's hard to get excited for another title because they don't do enough on land. If they did well, more, well, but the, their bonuses are kind of low and you're... you're enough, um, no. I, I don't know about you, but I get totem fragments pretty frequent. So mm -hmm. I'm getting totems to put on and they, they give bigger bonuses, the rare ones, and I get a lot of those totem fragments. So well, I think I've already made both. two That was a totems. nice humble flex that you just did there. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm, he's doing it all the time. I mean, you, you're you not used to that. We are. <laughs> we, know, we know our routine. I, I, but I am purposely not doing about like 60 or 70 of my land because they're waiting for my Chaos Legion cards to get out of, moved out of rotation. Because what I learned is if you don't have something to do with your cards when they get moved out of rotation, it hurts. Like, it still hurts to see how bad Untamed went down in value, but at least they serve a, serve a purpose for me to go work the land. And so I stopped buying cards after seeing how bad that hit, that hit me 
and yeah i'm taking a little bit of a hit not working some of my land but i'm like these chaos legion cards have to have somewhere to go um when that next set of cards comes out especially because we're looking at what like year and a half probably from that set coming out whatever it's going to end up being maybe maybe longer if they have to but that's what that would be my guess oh we don't know what proto how are you on the land game are you invested in the land and like um a, a little bit not not as much as uh sounds like steve is but i i've got like <laughs> i've got like 20 plots or so um, are they are they all working at the moment yeah they're all working they're, they're all getting research which i don't oh, know if it's going to be yeah. useful or not but uh smart move no no no. i'm sure I, i'm sure yeah if matt was big on on research i'm sure it would be worth it don't worry yeah i do research in green and the only plots i work sps on really now are my occupied just because they mm. have that bonus so it makes sense yeah I, I got a bunch of magic dragon lens specifically for research yeah yeah i didn't have any and th those are the only lands i bought like when they when somebody was selling them in my region he was spending a lot but he he put three of them up for sale and i was like i have to have some dragon magic so i bought those well, yeah, they're the lowest distribution, I think, of the magic lands, the, the dragon yeah. ones. Oh, then I'm happy I have some. Yay. Yeah, I opened 200 lands and I didn't even get one. So when I saw a couple go up in the region, and especially because my area is all rocky and these ones were in the forest and I wasn't doing anything good with my green cards, so I was like, perfect. <laughs> Stock jockey, it's not what research will do for you. It's what you will do for research. Yeah, I, we don't know everything on research, Doc Jockey, but in general, if it's a point and you have to spend it, I have to imagine it's going to have to do with upgrading. It's either going to gatekeep you from upgrades or they're going to be spent on upgrades. I don't know which, though. That's my guess, at least. Do you have a guess, Proto? I honestly haven't gone through the full updated white paper. There, there was so much in there that i i don't even know <laughs> my, my mind kind of exploded looking at all the different resource types it, it kind of did seem like it's going to be harder to get research though in the future once they start specializing all this stuff a little bit more so kind of figure it's good to stockpile it right now and it will be a waste because uh magic magic plots will be producing one of the most uh sought after uh essences so i mean they'll be important for for making food and, and and i'm sure they'll be important for the uh items and spells as well so i don't think like if you're using your land for for research instead of that it's probably big waste and i just think that uh, it will be like some sort of a gating mechanism mechanism the research points mm -hmm. thinking they won't be spendable but they'll be like uh, uh if you are at so and so research point, so you can do so and so in, in the land game, but that's my my just my guess. Yeah, like it, it kind of feels a little bit like. Did, did you ever play World of Warcraft? Like yes. ages ago yeah. when they did the Gates of Ankarage. Does that yes. mean anything to you? <laughs> they did what? Like a... left before that happened. Okay, it was like a, a big server event where everyone from both sides. Oh, on correct. Yeah, the, they, they had to like oh, yeah, yeah. That, give that was resources. Awesome. Yeah. So it, it kind of has that vibe to it where yeah. everyone's trying to pool together to, to unlock some sort of thing. And then you've got to assume like the people who get the most are going to get some kind of perpetual bonus or even if it's just like a, a special title or something where everyone's like, oh, that's the person that, that got the whatever bonus kind of feels a lot like that to me that's exactly where my mind went when they announced like you'll be contributing uh sps dc like staking cards or whatever like you'll be contributing wool and and, and cloud and and and, and material and whatnot <laughs> it's the same thing like you'll be everybody like a team team effort to get to get it to yep. get the gates open or to get it uh to get the shrine whatever shrine was it the shrine that you have to build for your land to be starting next by something like that but yeah it would be definitely entertaining mm -hmm. i saw there was a there question, was a in question the yeah chat um asking about the trap card idea i don't know do you, do you guys yeah, know what yeah, that I was is gonna get to that, that one you know i i remember you mentioned that but did you want to go over that idea you had again yeah, so that this is um, this is kind of talking about an idea that Games on the Block had, I believe, which was 
effectively adding more combinatorics to increase the complexity of what bots have to to do and my kind of insight into that was i didn't like the suggestion the specific suggestion that he gave of just adding random abilities to different lineup positions i, I didn't think that would be a good enough thing um from my perspective the thing that's more difficult is is hidden information where it's something where a human has to make more meta level calls of what's going on and a bot just they don't have that intuition to be able to do it so it's, it's a lot harder to program for us so the the trap card idea was that say at the start of the match you can set up a trap card that predicts something that's going to happen in the match and if it does then some effect is triggered so i trying to remember what the examples i gave were but it's like do if someone think, plays um... an opportunity card then it switches it out for recharge or something something that would really mess up what the opponent was trying to do do, do you think that spells and equipment are going to kind of fit that niche because depending on how, what they make and what they're able to do um you know it's probably going to change gameplay a lot if you can you know maybe have a a card to give your characters mm -hmm. void and a magic spell to do some other thing and other things and then you go into the match and you know, you go, oh, they made my weakness, but I have a spell here to turn my weakness into a strength somehow. Yeah, so that, that really depends on how they implement it. Um, I think I touched on this one as well. It, it depends if it's like tactics or not. Because the problem with tactics is I have all the information by the time I get to make that choice. So it's very easy for a computer to just say, this is your team, this is my team. I can run all of the scenarios and I'm going to know if I can win most of them, if I can win any of them, if, I, if none of them would win, then I'll, I'll know that, right? Like it, it doesn't take very long to figure that out. But if so, there's hidden information, that's harder. So if the spell and equipment is shown to you, but while you still can make an option on your side, no big deal. But if they show up after the battle stopped, started, maybe. Yeah, like if, if I need to pick the spell before I like pick my team, that would be well, harder I'm saying for me. But if you if you can't see what spell I picked until we're already fighting. Oh, um, but I can still see your team? You can see my team, I'm guessing, if there's a tactics phase um, and a spell no, phase. No, you're going you're gonna to have to be able to see my team. No, the items, the items so... and spell, from what I understood, there will be a separate phase just like tactics. So you have a, you see the team and then you have a phase where you can choose a uh, item or spell that you can try to affect the battle with so it will be just like tactics just another phase yeah but I, see... I don't think that adds enough like but that. you see yeah, the opponent but can you can you give an example proto i mean I, I was curious about this trap card like uh just a made up example i tried to imagine how it's going to work uh yeah so i, I think the example i started to say it was it was like you you pick I don't know, like the, the person's going to play an opportunity card and then it, if you're right, then it switches opportunity for recharge instead on that card and totally changes that card for the opponent. If you guess they're going to play a tactic summoner and they do, then it switches the abilities that was picked for it. So if you picked, you know, your life leech and affliction, well, now it just switched it out for, I don't even remember what the other ones were on Marcus, trample and fury or something. Wow. where it, it just totally like messes up what the other person was going to do wow um, i don't know that sounds like too powerful of an ability i imagine that would be kind of interesting well yeah it, it would have to be very targeted I, i'd be pretty mad if i spent the money on my lorcus and then i go to use him and you're allowed to pick my like switch my tactic pick right but, i mean this, this would just be like a, a shot in the dark that you need to take so it's it's taking advantage of kind of meta information obviously that is specific example is probably a little too strong but yeah. um actually this made me remember the thing i was going to say earlier um which was we, we were talking about uh, like allowing players to have kind of broader access to cards and i, I mentioned that one way to do that was with like a, a more limited mode well uh, another example that i thought of um is if say before the game starts you get to choose a splinter and you're given a random phantom common rare epic and legendary from that sprinter uh, splinter they're maxed 
and you can choose to use any one of those cards in your team. If you don't like any of them, then you don't have to use any of them. If you decide to play a different splinter, that's fine. But that lets people experiment with cards that they don't own and makes it hard for bots because now I have no idea what you have access to. Even though like I, I might have been shown some as well, if I didn't pick the same splinter as you, then I, I have no idea what you suddenly can get added to your team. But what about people that have all, all cards? Well, I mean, like th this could even be outside of the active splinters. Like you can just add something completely new, right? That just yeah, that would be that would be an interesting thing to do. So you mean cards that are not in the deck, like it's not in your deck, they're just uh, totally new cards that uh, you just get for the battle, but they're right. not they're not in in any of the sets they're just random yeah, yeah they, they yeah, could they'd... be like either not in the sets or they could be not in the format they, they could be whatever you want right yeah well the um the idea that i i was throwing around after hearing mondroid's idea if you haven't heard it was basically you you put it you put it so that people get ghost cards at the level of the league that they're in no matter what league they're in but the cards would have to reduce your earnings unless you own them so you know you could put together kind of partial decks and still go up to the top um, and be competitive all, all the time if you were good enough to win matches because you'd have to still be good because now everybody would have these and so you'd have to be winning more than losing to get up into the upper leagues but you uh, players who buy all the cards would still have an advantage in bronze uh, silver and gold when they're in those leagues because their cards would be higher level the ghost cards would always be the level of the league that you were in but if you were good enough to get up into diamond and even champion your cards you know they'd be they'd become max level so that you could play the game be competitive in the game always be pretty competitive in the matches um at least or have cards to, to field and if there's more players playing then the guys who have the rare legendary stuff might not be somebody you face as often um because the hope would be that more people would come and play if you could play this way and you wouldn't the the, the people who own all the cool legendary cards the lorcuses the airdrops would have an advantage over your standard free-to-play players they would hopefully be inspired to buy those cards and to buy the other cards when they're constantly seeing you know you could have won 30 sps but you don't own any of your cards are you you know so you you got like two or, or one or point one two five like somebody said they earn in bronze right now but you wouldn't mm. you wouldn't be ever stuck where you couldn't where, where card leveling also was why you couldn't move up in the leagues at, at least not to the degree you are today is kind of the idea that 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 uh i took off of Mondroids. Mondroids I original idea I think was a little bit different. I think it was just max cards for everyone, but I thought that kind of ruins Splinterlands since it does have card leveling and, and different abilities at different levels. And if you completely uh, eliminate that, I, I thought it was a little bit weird. So, you know, hopefully you'd have a pretty competitive game in each one of the leagues with, well, maybe a lot of these free-to-play players just playing the game, earning a tiny bit of crypto. And then hopefully over time going, all right, I'll, I'll go ahead and buy cards. I'll go ahead and level them up. Um, I'll, I'll invest because I want to start to earn, which is, is kind of a rift off of the idea uh, that is being used in um, in parallel. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good in coding at all. So I'm just having a feeling that will take a lot of coding hours from the team to implement. I know, I mean, I think Proto might be uh, having a better idea how how easily implementable that is because see, I don't want the team to be uh, distracted with stuff and I want them to, fo to focus on what they already have as a plan and then if that doesn't work then maybe yeah, we can look into other options but what do you think Proto how 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 uh, easy is that to be implemented every player to have uh, ghost cards to a level appropriate for their league which is like changing all the time uh pretty easy to be honest that that yeah. shouldn't be very difficult okay. to implement for them 
I, I thought it, whether yeah, they want I to do that. I thought know. it was easy because ghost cards exist already. Whoa, they've you already thought you... in the past that they, they they've also already in the past had an engine that based your earnings on the levels of your cards in each one of the leagues. So it would only be a rift or a smelt. They they stopped doing that, but they they used to have it. So they've they've worked through that before because it used to be if you played a lower level card in a lower level league, it lowered your RP score. Yeah, but ghost cards have never been dynamic, so they will be all they always been the lowest level. So it was never been like, oh, let me see which league are you. Then that those are the cards that. Yeah, you... you're right. Like what you actually battle with compared to what your RP score on would have to be have to change, right? They'd have to do an account check when they did your RP score if you won. Um, I don't think it's impossible to do though. Neither does he. Um, oh, I didn't but... say impossible. I just said I don't know how hard it is and how how long it will take. So yeah, if it's something. As Proto saying, if it's something that that's easily implementable, yeah, sure. I mean, okay, but for me, the reason why I like this idea is I think it solves the new player acquisition problem better. If you're a new player and you come to the game and you play in novice and all your cards are level one, that's fine. You get out of novice, you go into bronze, all your cards instantly become level two and level three, so you can be competitive. You're not going to be a king of bronze because you don't have the legendary cards. Maybe we do a thing where like. You know, every two weeks they get access to one legendary summoner um, that's that's in the current modern. So if they, they have one on their account uh, that they get to use, but that's it. And if he, you know, we all know the way that this game is made, the cards are niche to rule sets, niche to mana caps. Uh, it, no one card can really be used all the time. Lux is probably the closest card that can be considered to be like that. And she can't even be used in Little League. <laughs> So, um, th 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 so, so then you bring people in and you go, you can play, you can make it as far as you want, and then you can earn how much you want based on how much you want to invest into the cards and into your SPS stake. That, that's all on you. If you want to earn more, you got to buy SPS and you got to buy cards. If you don't want to earn more, then you can just play the game and be match liquidity. I, I don't know if you're going to hate this idea or not, but... What if the system you're talking about was paired with being a perk of a battle pass? Oh, I, I did actually think that with this kind of system, you could charge more possibly for the spell book. I, I don't even hate your idea of them needing to have a battle pass to have that perk. I'd, be, I, I, I'd kind of be okay with that. The only thing I don't like about that is maybe don't call it a battle pass. Maybe call well, it a yeah, perk. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, because if a battle pass should be able to be sold to everyone, and if you already own the cards, you're never going to want to buy that perk. Oh yeah, this wouldn't be so, the battle pass, but it, yeah, you don't get that benefit without having the battle pass, I guess. Or, or okay, maybe it only goes so up to a, a, or a bigger a bigger battle pass that works with it. I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, you know, different ideas on how to unlock or have access to this. I have no problem with. I definitely thought that if. Um, if you're changing the game to where really you can play through it from the beginning to end and there's earnings throughout because Splinterlands does give you that base multiplier on, you know, that minimum multiplier that, that there's been a little talk about changing, but it is there. So they are going to be earning some SPS. Our SPS pool per season is set. So there isn't an ability for this to, for anybody to get out of control earnings. If a lot of people come in, all of our earnings are going to go down a little bit. So that, that's something the DAO will have to adjust and, and pay attention to. But also, if you just got a lot of people who could come in and play for free and earn, because um, like I feel like that would not only put us on the same level as Parallels, like, hey, anyone can come and play this game, but we, we would have a small earning component in our version of it. Mm. Um, it, but, it might need to change the way that the earning system works right now, because I, I think the way that you currently earn like you, you need to have more staked sps the higher your rating goes like it, they're, they're kind of functions of each other so if this I, player doesn't own anything and they get higher they're actually going to earn less than if they were winning lower rating well matt has said that even if your sps stake is high and you make it higher you technically should be earning more um is the way he wants this system to work they're still tweaking it to get it yeah, there but i'm imagining they're going to figure right that out i know it's not and that's one of the things somebody needs to point out to him that it's not working how he wanted because he wanted no matter what if you go up that things get better for you 
so that if you are playing above your scale while your multiplier is down because the base rewards are bigger up there you know 50 percent of what you got up there should still be better than what 100 percent of down here is kind of thing mm -hmm. but not not infinitely better not not actual what you should be earning up there you know if you want to earn that real number you got to stake your sps but the i actually don't mind it scaling kind of bad though because if you're good enough to play the game in diamond when you when you get in here and you start playing it and you start seeing i could be earning 20 or 30 sps per win but i'm only earning like point what did that guy say that he's earning in bronze a while ago like point one seven when he wins Mm -hmm. or something yeah. or 0. 0.117 maybe even and so you're winning diamond matches and getting 0. 0.117 you're gonna go all right okay let me at least look into what i need to do to, to to earn a bit more because i'm leaving you know even even at a cent you're like i'm leaving a quarter a, a match on the table right now yeah. that i could be winning <laughs> you, you know they did have a system they talked about a while ago that would help with this a little bit of delegating or how to work like you could stake on other people yeah that yeah they did talk about that being something with sps staking they kind of replaced that with just sps renting yeah. which is another solution for those players that get good enough right your your casual people are just going to be floating around in bronze and silver but the guys that get into it and, and really get into the the, the theory craft and you know really really understand it because they have access to a good amount of the cards they're, they're going to get high and then when they if if they, that would uh, to me assume that these are people who like the game and they would start looking into it and while assets are down they would probably just be renting because renting is so cheap right now that it, you could probably rent what you need and make back what you pay but that'll only last for so long in my mind if you have a game where the, the only you know there is no limit to how many people you could bring in in that in that kind of format so um yeah, and just, if they brought back player staking, that would be cool too. But the player staking is always interesting to figure out who earns what, right? On uh, just because I saw one comment in chat that I want to address is like from Last Hope. He said the problem right now is that you incentivize to rent only one BCX cards in wild and way less SPS as before, which is very bad. Yes, but it was noted last town hall as a problem, like uh, those one bcx accounts getting way too high and that is also something that will be addressed with i don't know it was additional boss or something but but it's not something that uh, the team is ignoring so it won't be um uh, it won't be that easy in the future i think to get uh, to high levels even in wild with uh, one bcx cards so that's what i heard last time for i don't know yeah, yeah. Right now we're in the we're in the midst of a problem where in modern there's not enough match liquidity for the for for us to get all up to I think where we want to be, and then in in uh, wild there's so much match liquidity that accounts are getting too high. I had to I I do run a little like level four bot with our with Archmage, and uh, it runs in wild, and all of a sudden he's playing in champion. And yeah, I'm like, what are you? What are you doing up there? I had. To, I've I had, had to so stake many up... people tell me this recently that they're like, "What? Why is my accountant champion?" <laughs> yeah, and so I I'm like, me tell you. <laughs> I was like, "Crap! I got to stake some more SPS to that account." So like, I doubled his SPS stake, and I'm like, "I still probably got to get like another hundred k to give him." So yeah. well, thanks see, for lowering it, the price, guys, because I was gonna buy some soon. It incentivizes you to buy more SPS, but uh, yeah, but again, this is just temporary, so it won't be like that. Uh, if somebody yeah, yeah. taking advantage of it now, good. I mean, they can. Wow, well, they can. But when they cannot, it won't be possible anymore to rent only one BCX cards. And like, it's not something that is going unnoticed. It's not something that team is not aware of, and it's not something that is not well, a solution. I, I do think on. in my mode, renting cards would go back to being really, really good, because a lot of players who were playing for free would rent very cheap cards if they turned on their earnings. So I think the rental markets would immediately get better in a mode like what I'm speaking of. I don't know if my mode should be a, a different mode or just the way Splinterlands has changed to work. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking there will be happy people, that's all. But uh, yeah, as I said, if it doesn't take much dip, uh, time, and but they probably will consider it. Just I don't think at the moment they, they won't take on anything 
aside from what they yeah, have. Yeah, you know, I kind of wanted to see how these bots end up working. If, if you kind of solve a lot of our problems, I proto, then I don't think we need to make drastic changes to the game. Yeah, proto, uh, because, I'm just having a and, question. And, and sorry to put that on your shoulders, but at least you said somebody else is helping. <laughs> uh, do you only, I mean, is the plan for you only to run um, modern bots to solve the lack of uh, much liquidity or also the what Matt was mentioning bots in wild as well to to uh, kind of limit people from getting crazy high with almost no cards um so I, I didn't actually see the last town hall so I have no idea what you're talking about and he hasn't talked to me about it so uh, okay because yeah, yeah, I, I don't it, know he said the problem in modern is there is not not much liquidity so people mm -hmm. cannot get out of uh, silver gold or whatever with max decks and the problem in wild is there is so much liquidity that uh, one bcx accounts are getting to top of diamond even champion so yep. he wanted to solve both so i don't know if, if uh, the other one also includes uh, stronger bots that will kind of limit the jump of the lower accounts i don't know but you don't um, know it, obviously. Yeah. I, I don't know how stronger bots is going to do anything. They're just like the, the problem is there's so much liquidity that there's so much rating that builds up underneath all of the players that eventually the top of the worst players are just going to get too high, right? Do you see any solution on that on top of your head? Um, of how to get there to be less bots in wild? No, no, and how no, to, no. Uh, how to need, need, need to have more BCX to be high up. And the only solution I see coming is champ is Chaos Legion moving to wild because there's a lot of those cards. So the Chaos <laughs> Legion level uh, cards on the bots might be higher level. <laughs> no, just um, uh, to lower the level, to, I mean, to lower the ratings of uh, people with almost you no, know, like just one BCX of Chaos and only soulbound cards or whatever, just like to. To not be so easy for people to reach higher levels of uh, diamond champion in in wild. Um, yeah, not not like a. I don't have a good solution for that. I mean, like the way we used to do that was with artificial walls. We would kind of keep people in these buckets, right? Um, so, but that's like, taking that away works, those. But that only works if they're not already there, right? Yeah, but by taking away those walls, there's there's nothing to stop it. There's just this giant pyramid of players where eighty percent of the pyramid has to have one BCX. So the, it's, there's just too many of those accounts. Well, I'm hoping they'll find some solution because Matt mentioned that they're looking. For... Yeah, I, I honestly don't know how adding more bots helps with that. Well, I don't. Well, if you added bots that were geared to win it would fix the one BCX counts from getting too high because they would lose more. Um, but I mean, you'd have to put in strong, like a lot of strong accounts. And a lot of bots because I mean, the chance of yeah. them facing that bot is, that's what he's saying. Like when so, there are so many mediocre bots, even if you put like 1000 bots, there still be maybe a good chance that they never get to play the strong bots. They play between each other and move up. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't think that sounds like a viable solution to just add. Like it's it's hard to get strong accounts. It's very expensive to get strong accounts. So I don't know how many they would need to to counteract all of the crappy ones that are below it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's that's a weird solution to me. I'd yeah, be interested I, I don't to hear know. what Matt was thinking about. Yeah, I don't know how he's going to solve that either. Because you asked but all the bots to go play over there, so now they all fight each other. Now they all realized, well, if we're only fighting each other, <laughs> we uh, well, we don't need to be that I know, strong. I know he said that they're looking into that problem. So if there is a solution, I'm sure oh, they, they they'll find some fix, whatever it is. Yeah. So hopefully, at least. Are you invested in anyway? Ape of Wall Street and uh, the um, how are we supposed to say it again? Eleven Eight the Pro. It's it's I'm not I never get his name right. It's maybe I always try to guess. Is it Elevate the Pro or something? He Elevate. stopped by. He had an interesting comment. I don't know if he moved to YouTube, but he was on Twitch, 
and he had said, um, it certainly seems like it's a, vi uh, a volatile environment for a lot of players, multiple of reasons. He says he's been a hopeful player who's stuck around for three years now, but it's difficult to keep hoping for the future advancement when they seem to never come or come way too late. So I meant to get that in sooner, but it, it, we, we were, you know, well, covering I mean, a lot but, of stuff yeah. tonight. So. Uh, it's either, yeah, but everybody chooses their own But Like, yeah, if, if you don't have the patience or if you cannot afford to wait anymore, yeah, you take your losses and, and leave. But what I'm saying is, if you have conviction that this might go somewhere, and usually it's always said, whatever investment it is, don't uh, spend whatever you cannot afford to lose. So if somebody is spending money that they need, that means they were doing it the wrong way to start with. And if they're not needing that money urgently, they might as well wait and see what will happen because uh, as desperating things may look, things can change very fast and, uh, there are there were people living splinter lands during the better period, the the better the, the better packs period, and then there were people that stuck around and made millions. So I mean, it's kind of end of the end of the day, it's a choice. Like uh, you either stick and uh, see what future brings, or cut your losses losses and and leave. I, mean, I think. But I was curious if I brought to, are you investing in any other part of uh, the Splinterverse aside from Splinterlands, like any of the other projects that now uh, Aggie is uh, taking care of? Um, I mean, I, I got like the, the airdrop that they did with the colony stuff. Um, I have... Uh, what's the soccer one again? I, I don't even remember. <laughs> I, I've got GLX. something in that. Yeah, yeah, I've got like I don't know, one or two hundred thousand. I think GLX. Yeah, um, you know, bringing those up. Um, um, I don't remember who posed this question, but it was posed, so maybe I'll just throw it out there for you guys. Do you think that those, at this point, um, Splinterlands might have been better off never doing those things, because it kind of spread some of our money out into other projects. Neither one has gotten much traction one of them would almost be called an epic failure at this point i know they're working on making it better but glx has been so good that proto didn't know what it was <laughs> <laughs> and moon carts now has done gone past the uh point of launching where aggro said if it didn't launch by now it was an oh shit so uh, that that worries me a tiny bit because he was much more confident that this game would come to market quicker than this um, for moon cards. So, um, I mean, maybe um, maybe we should just have never made other games. <laughs> I disagree. I think they'll yeah. come. They'll come to. I, I mean, like they they made the decisions to do that when things were looking a lot better. I, I think they probably did go a little too wide, but. I think yeah, there'll be a great way for a lot of people because not everybody's that niche. I mean, the card game is kind of niche, and what other platform, the other platforms are bringing is something more like widespread, like Moon Cars, like Mario Cars. Who haven't played Mario Cars, for example? It's just like it's something that appeals to masses, and it can bring a lot of eyes to the ecosystem in general. So if, if they manage to, to make it right, if they get it good, if, if they go ahead with the changes that they're planning for GOX, I also think that that could be very successful. Like the way it looks, screenshots of the new, of the new version of the game. Psh, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think it will be uh, epic failure, as you call it, if that happens, if, if that comes to fruition. There are a lot of ifs, but I think also there is a lot of promise if those ifs actually happen. Yeah, I, I think one of the problems when they made GLX is that it, it was kind of too much like Splinterlands. And um, they didn't they, they did that a little bit with moon cards with with the amount of cards that you need to own. And, and so they, uh, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll learn from this that, you know, you you you, you can change the way you do these things. Um, I think it was a mistake on the cars to, to, to design them the same way they designed 
Splinterlands cards and ha needing 400 copies of these engines and stuff and having the same burning mechanisms, they could have just made the packs cost a little more and have it make more sense. Maybe need like 10 or 20 copies of it and and, and clean that up a little bit because it's 400 starts. I don't think you need 400 and yeah. stuff. I don't think you're right about that. No, no, you do for some of them. Um, so. At least that's what they said. The game isn't out yet, so maybe they're rethinking all of that because their pack sales did not sell out, and it was a low pack sale. So, um, which I'm happy. Yeah, I got well, mine, and I'm hoping if you're they're hoping they're going to be kind of rare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they make it successful, I'm thinking a lot of people will show at least interest in trying the game. Like, yeah, if it's fun game, and I'm sure they'll be streaming streamers streaming it if it's fun game. And it will, it, I think it can get quite a lot of attention. Quite fast. Here's that picture of the new game. Um, if you haven't seen it, I proto probably not because I don't think you, you were paying no, that much attention to this one. Um, if you played it recently, it's like a little three by three and you only play with like not so many players. This one to me looks like they're going for kind of a look of an old, like almost Final Fantasy tactics or, um, mm -hmm. If I really want to date myself, Shining Force or um, those or Heroes type of games, and Magic. Heroes of Might gonna, and Magic. Yeah, Might and Magic. I didn't actually ever play that one. So, oh, oh, but where you're going to move your characters, not not only passes to to different places, you're going to move them to different areas on the board. So it looks kind of more interesting. Um, it I, I I do think Moon Carts is a better trajectory for them going into like the unity code base and having something that looks a little bit more like a better game because the reality of uh the web3 environment you have games like big time you have games like parallel you have games like alluvium you have games like ori these are you all don't games, have that, games like that really look big. they look very good and they and they play like a regular video game i'm not saying they have the economies worked out that's the hardest part of the Web three game. No, no, I'm saying, but they, they look like here. a like a legitimate game now, um, and so to to release these games that kind of still look a little, you know, a little bit gimmicky or a little bit simplistic, it, you you really have to, you know, have something there. Um, well, the, if the somebody or in the things or something, if somebody is into football or how you, however you call it here, soccer, if somebody is into that and there is like that's the the most uh, like the number one sport in the world in general, uh, they are more likely, way more likely to invest into GOX than into Illuvium because it's something that touches like you. I, I don't, probably you've never been a, a, a football fan, as in soccer. You've never been a soccer fan. You don't have that understanding of the whole psychology when you're supporting a team, especially in, 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 in football, soccer. Uh, it's like it drives you if you're able to to put yourself in the shoes of a manager. It's it's a big appealing factor to want to try and play a game. Even I remember I was playing. Uh, there was a championship manager. 90, 90, 90, 1990 90, 90, 90, 90, that was you were just it was just like like excel uh spreadsheet like you just see what's what's happening like you're reading what's happening you don't see players moving you don't see, you just see the team's name and, and stats and how much they have and and down it says like what's happening at the moment and that was appealing enough for me to spend hours and hours in those kind of managers so i'm saying people that are genuinely into into football in general i think if they see a manager sort of type game which we don't have at the moment in crypto space because so rare is not like so rare is more like what gox they were trying to do so if there is a proper one i think that might grab a big portion of players i think you understand me but that's my opinion of course and uh, uh, but Jangles is telling us not to waste Proto's time on on GLX because oh, he's a yeah, Splinterlands sorry. guy. I mean, but... Proto, yeah, I didn't ask you like for how long you're available. I mean, we usually go around two hours, but I mean, at any point, man, if you if you if you have stuff to do, if you're bored or whatever, just 
you can just well, he does go. have bots to go launch he did tell us he might do that after the stream <laughs> I, mean, I, I do have that to do but uh no i'll, I'll stick around here as long as you guys are gone yeah i mean people can wait for those bots you know they can save some yeah no, no one wants those anyway so yeah yeah nobody's out there crying no at all that they're that they have no match liquidity in the bottom <laughs> leagues i swear I, I i was watching after sounds um He's doing those new comment videos, and, and Dwayne kind of does these too, but they have a different take. Dwayne picks, like, comments that he thinks are interesting. After sounds just trying to answer every one of his comments. Um, and, like, over and over again in his comments on the one I watched today, I, I, I can't handle playing max, max level cards in bronze. I can't handle playing against max level cards in bronze. No, I'm going to quit this game if I have to keep fighting max level cards in bronze. <laughs> and I was just again. like... I was just like, wow. <laughs> Hopefully that's taken care of and we have the man taking care of it. So, And he says that they're ready. So they don't need to do any update, right, Proto? You just, the moment you switch, you flip the switch and they're already on and playing, right? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, like I got a few minutes of stuff I need to do, but they're, no, they're but what more I'm or less ready to go. We don't need to wait for an update of the game or anything. Oh, no, no, no. Maintenance no. or yeah, they, they didn't actually um, announce it or anything, but they, they did do a change for me, um, like a, a hot fix to the back end of the game to, to support these things midday today. Yeah, um, and that's because yeah. it was interesting to hear that you, you couldn't get them into modern without them getting in trouble. Um, yeah. So that means they do have some bot detection guys that's working. Yeah, I, I got hit at two different layers. Uh, the first one when I tried to create the game, then got past that with their help and then another one when trying to submit a team so they, they've at least got two layers of stuff going on probably more that's good that's good news yeah to, yeah, to be yeah, fair I, think... I didn't try to actually like i'm not trying to pretend to be a browser i'm not trying to like spoof them or get around their mechanism so i don't know how difficult that is but at least there is something there yeah yeah uh, we we kind of glossed over that earlier but i did it did just hit me i'm like well at least that means you can't run a bot like you used to. <laughs> Talking about in, bots, you got to do some some other changes. Talking about bots, do you have any anything in the works uh, for ArcMage? Like any changes or any anything new happening? Or uh, yeah, so um, the the main thing right now for Rebellion that we're missing is tactic support. So. Right after I'm done with this, Tactics is going to be the uh, big addition that we're going to be finishing up, which will time nicely because I want to get it out before uh, Lorcus is available. So hopefully but, once, uh, once but we see that. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Should be in the next few weeks, hopefully. Um, after that's done, um, I do have some stuff that I'm working on. Um, I don't want to go too much in detail, but we're we're redoing our website, and it's related to that. Settings and stuff. Sorry. You you're changing the website that is related to the settings and stuff, or I, I didn't hear what you say. Yeah, so currently our website is basically just a little bit of informational, and then for updating the configuration of your bot. But we are going to hopefully be drastically expanding the functionality on our website okay that's that's good to hear yeah got, got mean, a little bit delayed detail i, I just i just wanted in. yeah I, I don't want you to say anything that you don't want i just wanted to give you a platform to to uh you know shout out whatever like to uh even like advertise your service if you want because i mean we appreciate you coming and taking away from your time and i think aside from you working as a contractor for the Sprint Alliance team, you're still running business of your own. So whatever you want to say or, or, or show or whatever you agree to, um, we're more than happy to uh, give you the platform. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, one, one thing that I could do, which uh, I, I did do for the People's Guild and I'll extend to you guys if you would like it, is I, I could provide you with an alpha token for you to give out to your community however you see fit. But yeah, that will be, I think, the community. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. You hear that, guys? We'll have to figure out how to give that away. Um, me and Baby Omega will figure that out and how you can get entered into it to make it fair. Um, don't want to, uh, you know, we're a two-hour show. I don't want the guys who weren't here at the beginning but fell asleep not to have a chance. So 
um, yeah, if you want to do that, we'd gladly give away something to the community. It's always fun to do. I've been known to give away things in my day, even though I don't do it as much anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we appreciate it. And, uh, uh, how how are you coping? Like, I mean, how are you coping with the whole change where now there are no chests anymore? So the only SPS coming from from battles is this a good, a positive thing for you or negative? Um. So we're we're trying to figure that out right now. Um, it, it's kind of weird because before we would try to get whatever percentage, depending on type of token you had, we, we would get it from the uh, focus and from the battle reward. Yeah. But since they put the focus, well, all, all chest rewards into the battle reward, it means we're actually kind of tapping into their season rewards which we weren't before so in a way it almost increases what we're charging but because the um season reward got split between uh the two different formats whereas before it was just one big pool that portion is actually a lot smaller so we're, we're trying to figure out exactly what the change they made did to our finances because our numbers haven't changed a ton. Um, so we're, we're basically just watching for a couple seasons to see where things even out at and see if it means we need to adjust our rates or not. But it will be like, did you give like a, ahead of time, right? I mean, you give at least a season or so for people to decide if they want to keep on using it or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're like I said, we're, we're looking at the numbers right now, and then once we've kind of talked internally, we'll we'll kind of let people know what we're deciding based off of what we've discovered. Awesome. But it, it's definitely been um, thinner lately than in the past, I'll say that. Um, now that you guys have a name for yourself in botting, are are you looking into any other games to bot? Um, not really, because most other games aren't as bot agnostic, and we really do try to like play ball with the the companies that are running these things. So, if there was a good opportunity that kind of made sense for our skill set and they were open to it, then we would look into it. But um, we we don't want to get in the way of the way people want to run their games because um aggie is kind of bot agnostic i don't remember our glx and moon carts it sounded like he was okay with bots and moon carts when we talked to him about that at least he said that that might help with match liquidity for that game well and, but uh, i mean do you really want a cart racing game to be bought it like no no but i I, 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 I don't have time to play all the games baby omega i need no, 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 but <laughs> no, no, but, but but to have a car running a perfect trajectory, that that just like I mean, that's, it makes no sense to be honest. Well, there's weapons in the game. There's oil patches in the game. Those are going to be used at random times and put in random places. But you're still competing against the car that is running. Hey, look, I'm not the creator of Moon Carts who said that he was going to be okay with bots. Okay. Yeah, I'm just we'll just, just talk to that. Aggie about your complaints, not me. No, I don't have complaints. <laughs> I, don't that, I don't think I don't think it will be something that will be accepted if it happens. Yeah. I, I think with GLX specifically, they they are not bot friendly. I think that's one of the reasons why we didn't look into them too much. Um, moon Carts, I think it's going to be a little bit more of a technical challenge to bot it like it's, it's a lot easier to bot splinterlands yeah um but doing it for a unity game would be a little bit more difficult especially okay. at any sort of scale okay okay i was just wondering if you were thinking about you know trying to branch out your services but i do understand how that could probably be difficult because you're right. There are some games. A lot of the newer games don't want potting in there. So, yeah, but we are so looking are, to branch out our couple services. There are other but... Splinterlands games. I wonder how they would feel about it, like D, D Crops mm. and uh, Rising Star, and um, and one day so eventually going to be that new Pokemon game that's coming out, right? And um, eventually they'll be Soul Keep. <laughs> yeah, and they'll be Soul Keep. So. Yeah, Soul, Soul Keep would 
be an interesting one. Um, yeah, I, I never got to play the the beta alpha, whatever they had available for a little bit. I never got to play it, so I didn't get yeah, to I see didn't too much too of how it worked. I did play it for what for a day. I just borrowed five hundred bucks for a day, just play it on stream to show the while well, still there was still uh Splinter Lance TV. Um I was as somebody who likes tower defense games, I was a bit disappointed because it doesn't have the dynamic I would want from a tower defense game where you are upgrading in real time your towers as the waves become stronger and stronger. It's just like set and forget, like you're putting your towers and you're hoping you put them in a good way to wipe out the waves because you cannot change anything while the oh, does it have like rounds to it. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't like that part. And I don't know if they will stick with that. I hope not. But for me, that doesn't feel really much like a tower defense game. It's not the same because, you know, the whole excitement is like you have to take decision, like which tower to upgrade at a certain time, like where to focus your fire. Yeah. And like that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that I had heard that it was going to be a thing where there was rounds and you basically were almost betting or wagering if you could beat the next round by accepting to do it or if you want to just kind of take the reward of where you got to yeah no that 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 will be there but what i'm saying is even like if if beating around a, a realm t- takes you three waves before each wave you are setting your your towers and hoping that you set them in a good way to take care of the wave because if not you cannot literally before the wave is over you cannot change anything so it's like, right. like like Splinterlands. You set your team and you hope for the best. And yeah, but I, I do I do think how... that we we have to know that the game could be completely different when we see it. Double code well, could I'm have hoping. bought the rights, and I'm once hoping they because... bought the rights to the game, they could have scrapped what it was and decided. But I to think it was it was it, there. So. I think it was their idea to make it this way. So I'm hoping that they change it because that's not how a tower defense game should work, in my opinion. Like that's not what I'm used to, and I know that Splinterlands is not typical card trading game because of the levels and, and, and everything and because of the changing rule sets and stuff. But it's still like for a tower defense game, it, to me, it just doesn't make sense that you cannot control what happens during the waves. But that's me. No, I agree. That's not typical tower defense um, for sure. But uh, but Jangles has an interesting question for you, Proto. Yeah. He, he, he wants to know uh, from a dev's point of view, on the surprise, uh, I think it's I think they're right. UI updates, not UX updates, but then you know the whole new look to the game on the battle screen. Um, in the Django's words, was it a silly mistake? <laughs> because no. apparently, a lot <laughs> of people why? are saying that they're having a lot of problems with this. I'm not so much. Um, mm. I had okay. to turn off the bra. I, I mean, my problem is I suck at the game, as you could see. No, I'm just hitting my 50-50 way too early down here in Diamond 2 now. But um I don't know. Do you have it did you did you think this thing was maybe not as uh, pretty or cool? I don't I wish he would expand. I don't know what he means by silly mistake. Um I like what they're doing, but I don't like how they did it, I guess is how uh, I would say it. Like I, I don't like this style of just like a hard cut over from one to the other. I, I'd rather it was more a thing where it's like, here's our new UI, hit this toggle and you can use it. And that allows people to optionally use it if they like it, not use it if they don't and get the feedback from people who are saying it's not ready to be seen yet, iterate on it. And then eventually say like, okay, well, in three months, we're going to cut over. so better give us your feedback if you don't like something on it. Yeah, they did throw it up on Mav server for a couple of days, but I don't think it, it was an, yeah. uh, enough Mavs cared to take a look at it. And I don't I've never really liked that the, the, I think turning to that as a way to um, test things without incentivizing people in any way to do it is dangerous. Um you know, it could be something simple like go go test it this weekend and if we see your account was on for enough hours, we'll throw you a Chaos Legion pack or a random solar bound card or something to get people to run over there and actually pound on it. Um, cause there's a lot of Mavs, but like I hardly ever go test things for them. Cause they're why, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm not your, I'm not your, um, what do you call it? Quality assurance department guys. You guys, you, I don't, I don't got time to just go yes. poke your stuff and hope. It, yeah. But when you get your cards, you're eager to go and 
test them out, right? And play with them. Mm, and... No, not until the legendary summoner, and even then, not so much. No, no, I'm talking about new set. Yeah, like, new sets. Yeah. Whether it's so bound or, 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 or set in general, really, yeah, it's. Then... I don't know though. Not really. I'm not somebody who's really ever played a lot of matches on the QA server. Well, but so but you have the option, sure. and and that's like that's kind of your reward. You get to see and experience the new additions before everybody else. If you want to see as an incentive. Yeah, but I mean, like the one time I did that, they changed like four of the cards, so it kind of invalidated it for me. So then I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> okay. It's your take, yeah. You have the right. Yeah, but ignoring like the pre-screening, pre-release sort of thing, I, I think like the way that went live, it was pretty harsh cut over for something that feels like it's still got some kinks to be worked out. I think it was because yeah. of the mobile, mobile, because they wanted to get it to get the mobile. Well, I, the Matt, uh, Nate kind of let the the cat out of the bag in the last town hall. That Matt said, "You guys better get everything on the the thing that can make it work on a mobile browser," because they deprecated their app because they don't have anybody to make the app, and uh, so they want everyone to just play on the mobile browser. And they had to get some of this stuff changed over so that you could play the same game on a mobile browser as you could on a computer. Um, yeah, it'd still be nice if they had the option to go to the old desktop style if you wanted to. Like, I don't know if you've used Reddit where you can go old.reddit.com if you still like the old stuff. If they, if they I'm, had just I'm the, sure if somebody, if somebody proposes it like on a town hall or whatever, they might cool. consider it. So, I mean, yeah, if anybody... I wants... don't think they'll go back. They're probably just going to... No, not go back. Just give the option, like, you can go to this URL and then you get uh, the old UI. Yeah. I don't know. It depends. There might be some technical challenges with that, but... Yeah, and, um... and also then wouldn't they have to support both UIs? I don't know how much extra... Yeah, so... they, they wouldn't want to do it for very long, I don't think. Yeah. I don't... I, you, you know, I don't know. I, th I just think all that does is make the Band-Aid rip off take longer eventually people will just get used to this and they'll fix the little things that are annoying like i know the one little thing that was annoying the only thing i've seen that annoyed me a little was when i was playing on the mobile browser this bar doesn't work like i i, I was shocked when i made it to diamond one the other day i mean i got knocked back down now but my bar was still way down here and it said you've made it to diamond one and i'm like i did oh yeah uh, because this thing would just wasn't working. It works on the web, but it doesn't work on the mobile browser. It just sits at like the start. <laughs> well, I remember people were complaining a lot about team selection screen. I barely hear anybody complains nowadays. I think everybody just got used to the new one. So it just takes time. Yeah, it I, takes I don't like time. how the, the the little versus thing, when you mouse over it, you can see the rule set. And you, you can't go and actually put your mouse over the rule sets to, if you don't know what the names of those icons are anymore. You used to be able to do that. Now, for new players, mm. like, oh, what are these things? I don't know. Can't tell. Also, you used to be able to mouse over where it says two hours ago, and it would tell you the actual time that it happened at. Can't do that anymore. So there, there's a few things that are a little awkward. But actually, one, one thing I really didn't like on mobile is that there's just when, when you're looking at it, so little fits on the screen that you just have a bunch of red and green blocks, but it's it's really hard at a glance when you're looking at it to actually see, like, how many did matches you play did I win. On, uh, do you play on the Keychain browser? Uh, I've or... played on that end. I've played on Brave. Because when you play on the Keychain browser, you they have the option to switch your view into whether or not you're on the phone or on the laptop mm, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, you and if, like you, if you do mode. that and you go to the sideways view on the phone, I, I, I found that there's not so much issue with the size. I haven't even played it in the other modes. So maybe if you're playing in that mode where you hold your phone straight up and you don't go into landscape, it, maybe it is too small. It, it yeah, work. but I mean, like that that's how most mobile players are probably playing this, right? You don't think they go landscape mode? The majority of them? Most? I don't know. It's a card game with where you got to make it where you got to see both teams. So I just kind of figured most people would do that. But if they're not, maybe I should. Let me try to pull it up on my phone right now. One second. One second. <laughs> okay. I was like, maybe I'll play it the other way to see how bad it is. Maybe that's why I haven't. 
thought that it's so terrible because when I do play on my phone, which I do do a decent amount, I just do it in the keychain, and then on the keychain on the bottom of it, it has a little picture of basically a, a, like one of the icons is a phone or a laptop, and, it, and you can pick it, and it kind of changes your display from whether or not you're doing it like a traditional phone or if you're going to do it like a, in a landscape setup. Yeah, well, he's testing that out. Let's see. Yeah, no, it, it still has the same problem. If you're if you're not actually in desktop mode, at least it's like you, you can't see the full match from left to right. It goes still like top to bottom. I, and and for uh, gathering, I did zoom in a little because I I've, I usually don't pay play at a hundred percent. So this all looks pretty normal. I don't do this enough. All right, so this is somebody that likes using a via. She's going to be available. That's and not available. Views. They have green body zone. <laughs> yeah, they have grim, but they have lower level inevitable. But this is Little League. Little League without dragon. Interesting. And without death. I like death in Little League now. Maybe in this particular you setup, have a, do a magic team. Oh, but you're going to run into him. Yeah, it's the three, three mana team. Um, this guy, this guy, this guy, her. This guy, and then this guy. No Mandarin. <laughs> um, if they're going big magic, I'll just take the bounce back and hope it hurts. No, because enough. it's it's opportunity rule sets. Oh, I forgot. I hate it when I forget to check the rule sets. I shouldn't play live. <laughs> this is probably going to be bad. I might, but. I was just playing while Proto took a look at the other thing. <laughs> Musa Salina will be the first to go, probably. I'm going to zoom back out. I don't like seeing everything. Your so lack of martyr disturbs me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But like I said, I totally forgot about this rule set part of it. I just made kind of a standard Little League team with a little bit less healing. And then because lots of... I put him at the back because usually there's a lot of sneak on the other team. Well, he did go for a lot of magic reflect, so magic maybe wasn't so great. Um, I probably should have played an, an, an amplify though. If it does, blue have an amplify again. Yeah, the yeah. magic will barely ever reach your tank, being the highest amount. Of yeah, it. you're right, and she's gonna die instantly. So yeah, it's not gonna matter. But I did kill her, so that speeds me up. I am going to pop this guy, though. That's not going to be great. Yeah, I wish they weren't tied. I definitely did not set myself up to have the right monsters targeted. <laughs> not at all. Can I... Mm, no. So, next death is here. Maybe this guy will miss? Nope. Seven speed <laughs> wasn't... Seven speed and flying. I wasn't able to get a miss there. Yeah, that's a pathetic, pathetic attempt at a game. But you can't forget one of the rule sets. There's proof yeah. of that, guys. Oh, you can, but then you deal with the consequences. Yes. Oh, well, uh, I mean, it's 10 or 5. Uh, yeah, I yeah, think... yeah. I was figuring we, we were showed. we were going to be wrapping this up. Is there anything you want to leave the crowd with, Proto, before we get out of here? Um, I'm try Archmage. We got right. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, yeah. In wild, it'll literally win more than you want it to right now. So, and uh, <laughs> and the price and the arc made, uh tokens actually on on third market party markets are like still at the moment, like they're all time low. So, yeah, if you have some extra accounts that you wanna uh, use, take advantage of the fact that you can reach high with not much card power. Right? Definitely try arc mage. If, yeah, if and, and remember, uh, Proto said he's going to be giving us an alpha token to give away, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so... and if you're if you're an ex bot user, 
DCX pod and move to our page also. Ooh, <laughs> you're calling him out right there. Oh, on, on moral grounds, I mean. Yeah, uh, that's why you, I would use ArcMage. I never, yeah, I you never heard thought it, about you using Xbox. You heard it from Proto himself when he was talking about potentially getting into the pod service in other platforms. His main point was if it's going to be morally accepted in the game. So they care about that. They have always uh, been with them for a while, quite a while. So one thing that they have over Xbox is at least they keep their morals intact. So yeah, if if you are a moral guy and use Xbox, maybe consider switching to Arc Mage. It's up to you. Be the good guy. But thanks right, for guys. thanks for being with us, guys. And uh, we'll probably see you next week. Uh, I hope you had fun. Um, thank you, Proto, for making the time to come on stream with us. And I hope uh, you enjoy your time here. And Steve. Yeah, I did. Thanks yeah, all you and... crypto boys and ghouls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and thank you for completely tricking me, guys. I thought it was Tails. I literally moved the camera off the screen to make sure Tails didn't accidentally show his face. <laughs> because that you that boys and girls you uh, boys oh, we were and planning, girls, you we were planning to go so, we were so. planning to go even further. Right? It, like if he had a camera set up, I was going to say that Tails for the first time will reveal his face on stream. But uh <laughs> Yeah, we, we scrapped that idea. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us again today. Um, this stream ended up being a lot different than I thought it was going to be, but it was in a good way. And we will definitely be back next week, and we'll probably be announcing how we're going to give away that alpha token. Um, we'll figure that out, baby. We'll have to talk about it. Yeah. Thanks, guys, and uh, have a good night.